guys sharing something amazing. I was getting so blessed by it, I didn't want to preach today. I just wanted you to just... Can you the minister forth? Amen. You are an anointed servant of God. And congregation, you are blessed to be in this house. You are blessed to be under this man of God. If you believe that, put your hands together and thank the Lord for this wonderful servant. You know, there are pastors and there are pastors with father's hearts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Amen. There are pastors and there are pastors with father's heart. Not yeah. every pastor has a father's heart, but your man of God has got that. Hallelujah. So you will grow. Amen. You will fulfill your destiny in the Lord. Amen. And you will come up for the glory of God. Amen. Come on, I need more. I missed an answer. Yeah. Yeah. Back in India, our congregation is more, uh, uh, how, how can I put it, uh, more black than you. <laughs> I mean, I say something in the spirit and they'll be jumping up and receiving that oh, word and running yeah, around. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amen. Oh, Hallelujah. Oh, and I come here and I think, am I coming to a Catholic church or a Baptist church or somewhere? No, 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 no. no. How, how we, I'm born again, Pentecost and Holy Ghost. chapter 1. There is a scripture. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 19. The theme of the conference is His power. His power. power. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 19. Can somebody read that for me loud? <coughs> To us, word who believe. What is the greatness of his power to us, word who believe? For the power of God to be activated in your life, what you need is faith. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The power of God towards us, we activate by faith. Yes, sir. And that's what I want to preach tonight. Uh -huh. Is it night or morning? Morning. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Been traveling around too much. You didn't come into a hall and you're not exactly sure. It's morning, night. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 11. One more scripture. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 7. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7. And by faith, Noah warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, and built an ark to the preparing or the saving of the house by which he condemned the world and became heir of righteousness, which is by faith. Amen. Amen. I want to preach to you power released into our lives by faith. Amen. Amen. Noah built by faith. You might have nobody to build your life. You might have nobody to help you through. But by faith, you can see certain things build in your life. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. You know, I stepped out for Jesus when I was 20. By Six months, I was pastoring a church. Nobody handed me a church. It so happened that I was a druggie, I had long hair, a beard, and carried a knife. Kind of suicidal, temperamental. And then I come to know about the love of Jesus, I give my life to him. And I'm not exactly sure how my life is going to be. We are five boys at, the, at home. My eldest brother is a computer engineer. He's in the United States, having his own computer firm there. My second brother is a mechanical engineer, having his own uh, firm up in, in India. 
My third brother, he's finished his you know, master's in uh, business administration. And he takes care of our plantations. We have estates, so he takes care of that. I'm the fourth. And I didn't do well in my studies. I didn't get through my graduation. And my younger brother is also finished his uh, master's in business administration and traveling around the world, you know, and doing great things. And then I look at my life and I'm saying, Lord, what is my life going to be? What, what do you have? And that is the time the scripture became alive in my heart. Son, if there is nobody who is willing to support you, help you, or build your life by faith in God, you can see something happen with your life. And I have a testimony to the fact that God will always honor faith. Whether it be in India, whether it be in Nigeria, whether it be in Ghana, whether it be in Georgia, whenever somebody releases their faith unto the Lord, God will build your life. Look at somebody and say, God will build your life. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So it was amazing that God began to just, you know, step by step build up. Where without me having any contacts, any spiritual connections, nothing, here I am traveling around the world. Two years back, I had the privilege of going into the White House, having breakfast with the, uh, with the President Obama. Hallelujah. Not a graduate, but my friend. from the Old Testament to yes, sir. Yeah. Look at the 6th chapter and verse 8. Speaking about Noah. Yes. Genesis 6 verse 8. Anybody reading it for me? No? Amen. Noah found grace in the sight of the Lord. Look at somebody and say, you're graced. You're graced. Now, it is a wicked generation at that time. And amidst that, Noah found grace. You know, when I came to the Lord, the biggest challenge for me was, you know, all the youth who were my friends began to come for the prayer. My biggest challenge was, how do I get them to walk in victory? Been tempted in all sides. How, how, how is it possible for them to live the right way. We have the righteousness of God imputed to us through Jesus. But because of that, we can lead a life in the right way. Yes. So how is it possible? Somebody sitting here, let me tell you, from this day forward, Hallelujah. you're going to sense and experience something that you've never experienced before. Yeah. The grace of God that helps you to overcome that which overcame you in the past, showing up into your life. Uh, lift your hands and say, I receive the grace of God. I receive the grace of God. Amen. 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 Glory be to the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now before I got saved, when I used to read about Joseph running away, when 44's wife tried to hold on to him, I used to say, what is that guy doing? <laughs> but now I understand. When grace shows up in your life, 
Amen. Hallelujah. There is no other option now. Glory unto the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. When, when temptation comes, it's like uh, the, the, the water falling on ducks. Body. The biggest temptation in your life, you're gonna say, mm, 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 mm. that girl, you're not good enough. A guy, you are not good enough. I got Jesus with me, I got the grace of God with me. I'm a Jewish generation, I'm a holy nation. I belong to God, I will serve him in holiness. Blessed are the Lord and the heart. Hallelujah, they shall see the Lord. I will rejoice. I think it was Robert Murray McChini who said, you know, a uh, 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 holy man of God is an awful weapon in the hands of Almighty God. Oh, holy man. Amen. Amen. Glory unto the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Look at the ninth verse. It says that these are the generations of Noah. And you would expect the generations to be written down. But he's speaking about the genealogy and saying, Noah was a just man and he walked with God. Wow. Amen. Then back in India, I do not know if it was in Africa, they say, oh, this guy is from such and such a family. His father is who and such and such a person. And that is his brother-in-law. That is his father. That is his mother. No, the gene genealogy is mentioned. Names are taken. And here is the genealogy of Noah, the just man who walked with God. Wow. wow. Would you like to be known like that? Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Not just on the weekend. You're walking with God just not on the weekend. A weekend walk is a weak walk. Yes. Hallelujah. We walk with God 24-7. Yes. Seven days a week. 365 days a year. Look at somebody and say, I walk with Jesus. He walks with me. He talks to me. I talk to him. Glory to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. This is my aristocracy. This is my genealogy. I have the Lord with me. I walk with him. Oh. Oh. Amen. Give a high five to somebody. If you're not, if you're not scared of the coronavirus. <laughs> to baptize my father and my mother. Wow. Wow. I baptized my grandmother who was 92 years old. Wow. We are five boys. I baptized all my four brothers Hallelujah. and their wives and their children. Hallelujah. I baptized my wife. Wow. I put her under the water and said, do you accept me? <laughs> wife Whoa. and 
at his wife's parents. I baptized my uncles and aunts. I only preach what I've experienced in life from God's word. Hallelujah. God don't know how to build an ark for the saving of your house. Build. Let me tell you, your family is going to come into the ark of salvation in Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter how far they are. But this morning, this morning I decree it over you. I speak it over your life. May your household come into the ark of salvation in Jesus Christ. Put your hands together. Give glory to God in faith. to God in faith. And say, so my family is coming to the Lord. Every one of them. 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 Yes, your Uncle Joe will come to the Lord. Hallelujah. Your Aunt Mary will come to the Lord. Hallelujah. Sister Sophie will come to the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory unto the name of Jesus. Somebody in your neighborhood will come to the Lord because of God's grace in you. I prophesy it over you. We're going to see towns being emptied into the kingdom of God for the glory of God. Just not households but the Lord says I shall bring into you whole tribes root of our towns and cities even just like Philip prophesied and ministered for and the entire Samaria was touched by the power of God the Lord says there is a there is a city anointing an anointing that will bring in communities to the Lord Rabala if you believe that put your hands together give glory to Jesus Amen Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The ark of salvation. God told Noah, this is what you do. I wanted to build an ark. It should have three layers. Say, three layers. Say that. Three layers. Three layers. It should have one door. one door. Should have one window. Three layers. One door. One window. The only way, the only door that we can be saved is through Jesus. In India, we have over, over 33,000 gods. You can choose. <laughs> Hallelujah. Which God you feel like worshipping, you can choose each day. What kind of God you are in the mood for. Amen. Hallelujah. But the Bible says there is salvation in no other name under the heavens through which mankind shall be saved except the name of Jesus Christ. There is a remnant, there is a bunch of people in India who belong to Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone who are not ashamed of him. Hallelujah. Amen. Now when I came to the Lord, I told the Lord one thing, Lord, if I live, I live for you. If I die, I die for you. And so, you know, I was just telling Sam, uh, you know, I didn't get married till I was 42. I thought I would be a martyr. So I didn't want to get married. But finally, my parents said, if they don't kill you, we'll kill you. Get married. You better... <laughs> you better get married. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Glory unto the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, somebody said, you know, Columbus would have never discovered America if he was married. <laughs> because the moment you step out of the house, the wife will ask you, where are you going? When are you coming? <laughs> With whom are you going? And finally, you'll say, okay, okay, I'll stay at home. Okay, I won't go. <laughs> I'm glad, JD, your wife is not like that. <laughs> Amen. Three layers. There is only one door. Only one mediator between God and man. That is our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And when the time came, 
The animals came and stood in a queue. And so here is brother Shem and brother Japhat with the mic standing in front of the ark. Saying, why do you want to come in? So each one of them have to say why. Hello, lion, why do you want to come in? The lion says, you know why? You see that little lamb over there in the front? If it was before, I would have eaten it. But now I've repented. I'm transformed by the... I am transformed by the power of God. It is the power of God transforms you. Hallelujah. Glory unto the name of Jesus Christ. There is no other way you can enter the ark. Amen. Before I would have eaten that lamb, but now I have repented. I went for that grace conference. Oh. Amen. Hallelujah. See, Noah had to put the animals in the first level. And by faith, I believe you are going to go up one level. There is a level in the church, we call it the animal level. Well, you are righteous by faith, all of that, but you are still living like an animal. But you got to go one step higher. Look at somebody and say, I am going to go one step higher. Amen. Amen. In the second level, Noah put the birds. And it's in the third level, Noah, his wife, and his children are. And that is where the window is. The difference between the top level and the bottom level is this. Only if the top level guy puts something, will the lower level guy eat. Are you with me? Amen. Hallelujah. The pastor has to keep on saying, did you read the word today? Pray in the spirit for one hour. Did you fast last week? Did you confess right? I mean, you've got to always keep asking and say, Amen, amen, amen. But you're going to go up one level tonight. All the animals are there. And I, I've been a pastor now for almost uh, 26 years. And God has brought a huge uh, you know, level of fruitfulness into our ministry. And I see that all kinds of animals in the church. We have the giraffe in the church, you know, giraffe. The long neck. It's always trying to see what the other sister is doing. What is that brother doing? <laughs> You're always looking at somebody else. How much money did that person put into the offering? Is she wearing too much makeup? <laughs> the giraffe, the problem in the church is that they will never eat what the shepherd gives them because they want high-end stuff. Tall trees. It only wants to eat from some minister that you have never heard of somewhere far away. The pastor is trying to feed you every week after week. He's on his knees preparing and trying to feed you. But they're not interested. You know? They just listen to a message on oh, that channel. <sighs> now they're sitting there and judging the pastor. Okay, let's see what you got to give. But that's going to change in this house from the stiff. 
you're going to feed what your shepherd gives you. Hallelujah. That is the best diet. That's the best food. That's the healthiest diet. Hallelujah. You're going to grow spiritually. You're going to grow emotionally. You're going to grow in the health and healing of God. You're going to walk in the blessing of God. If you believe that, put your hands together. Thank the Lord one more time. Hallelujah. You have uh, in the bottom level, the snail. It comes half an hour late for the service. The snail is actually waiting for the worship team just to get, get, to get warmed up before they can come in. <clears throat> but thank God even the snail made it. <laughs> you know, we had an interesting survey back in India. We, we had uh, one of the very apostles of Jesus, Thomas, St. Thomas, coming into India. And he died a martyr for Jesus. And so, he, mainly his ministry was in the southern part of India. And there was a church that came up in India way back, 2,000 years ago, when, when St. Thomas came. And so, th somebody said, if a snail had started with the gospel from southern India and started walking or going forward, the gospel would have reached Kashmir, the northern part of India by now. But nobody went. Till God sent an outpouring of the spirit. Now we have missionaries going in from Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Andhra, the southern states, across the land of India. And we're going to see a revival. If you agree with me, say that. Hallelujah. We're going to see the gospel of Jesus Christ being declared. You have the, what is it, the monkey? Always monkeying around. Jumping from one tree to another. Today they are in love dominion. Tomorrow they jumped into somewhere else. And then they jump from there to somewhere else. But he who is planted in the house of the Lord shall be fruitful. Amen. 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 If you're coming here for the first time, let me tell you, as the associate pastor of this church, <laughs> please be... <laughs> There's a good house. Come be rooted in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Be rooted in the house of the Lord. You will bear fruit in the season. Amen. 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 Glory unto the name of Jesus. Look at somebody and say, don't be a monkey. Be a monkey. We're going to go up one step higher. Yes. Hallelujah. We're going to go one step higher. See, the, the first level, you only think of yourself. And the power of God in the day of Pentecost came upon, said, you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. I used to think that only, you know, only the, really the, uh, not the third world nations, but the first world nations could actually fulfill that prophecy. It was such a headache to get a visa. <laughs> you want to take the gospel to the nations, but such a headache to get a visa. The procedure, then the finances that is needed. I thought only the first world, some, some missionaries, or some of the church in the first world will take the gospel. But that's not the way. This is for everyone who believes. Amen. Every one of you who are filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 
It doesn't matter which corner of the world you come forth from. It doesn't matter how, how little amount that you have in your account. Uh, when the power of the Almighty God comes upon you, uh, you shall be a witness for Jesus Christ to the ends of the earth. Uh, I, do I sense and see somebody in this house who are responding to that? Uh, the fire of the Holy Ghost uh, to make you go forth to the ends of the earth for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, hallelujah. Amen. It's not a selfish group. The power of God begins to be manifested when you release it. As long as it is just for you to have church and clap your hands and have a good time. And... No, no. But we're going to go one step higher. How do we do that? Acts chapter 20 verse 32. Acts 20 verse 32. And now brethren I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. Which is able to build you up. Build you up. The word of God is able to build you up to the next level. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, I had my spiritual father who would just keep sharing the scriptures. He was not a great preacher, but he would just keep sharing the scriptures. And I was quite delighted when I saw everybody who was coming onto the pulpit sharing scriptures. The word of God will build you up. I remember one time we were in a place and the demons were coming out of somebody. And I had one of my team members, an auntie, who was going and praying. And so the demon was manifesting and the demon said, the auntie said, in the name of Jesus, devil, go. And the devil said, if you quote me a scripture, I'll go. And the Andy came back running and says, uh, what scripture do I quote? <laughs> Amen. I said, quote any scripture. Even if you quote John 3.16, the devil will go. Amen. There is power. Amen. Glory unto the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. See, one word, the woman, the Syrophoenician woman said, one word. The Lord said, I have not come for you. I have come for the children of Israel. He said, see, one, one crump. One crump. Now, forget everything else. But if one word is there in your soul, it can produce a miracle like nothing else. One word. It can build you up. One word. Look at somebody say, one word. One word. You know, Jesus cast out the devil out of somebody who had a legion. That is 6,000 demons. The Lord didn't use 6,000 words. He said, one word. One word. One word and 6,000 demons left. 6,000 problems are going to vanish forth from our lives in the name of Jesus with one word, one word, one word. Hallelujah. Amen. The second level is the level where the birds are. You have the parrot. Amen. You have the eagle. I love the eagle. It's always wanting to soar up high. It's not like a chicken. The chicken will jump to the nearest tree or maybe to the wall. The eagle wants to go up higher. Let there be a passion inside of you. You're not happy with where you are. Want to go up higher in the Lord. Want to go up higher in the Lord. Want to go up higher in the Lord. Amen. See, we were positioned and made by God to go forward and to go up higher. You have two eyes. It is to look forward. 
Are you with me? If God wanted you to look behind, then he would have placed two eyes in the back. But he gave you two eyes to look forward. So there is ahead of you something brighter, brighter that God has kept for you. Look forward. Don't keep looking back. You, know, you cannot drive a car properly by just, uh, you know, there's a windscreen and there is the rear view mirror. If you keep looking to the rear view mirror and drive, you're going to have an accident. Oh my God, look what I've done in the past. Look where I have been. Look at the pain and the sadness of your past. You keep looking to that. You can't go my very forward. But you're positioned by God to go forward. Look at somebody and say, I'm going forward. Amen. Look at the way your legs are. It is to go forward. It's made by God for you to go forward. You really need an effort to go back, but to go forward. It's positioned in that way. When Henry Ford made the first car, he didn't have a reverse gear. The aircraft also does not have. Are you with me? Any time, I, I mean, I, how many of you have ever sat in a plane and then seen a small little vehicle push this vehicle back? You seen that? But this plane is going to take off. I came to tell somebody here, you're going to take off. You've been pushed back a lot of times, but you're going to lift up. You're going to take off. You're going to glorify the Lord. I prophesy it over you in the name of Jesus. Lift your hand and say, I receive that word. Put your hands together. Speak in the Holy Ghost. Speak in the Holy Ghost. Like an eagle to go up higher. You know, uh, the book of Jude, the 20th verse. How would you go up higher from the second level? Build yourself up. In your most holy faith by praying in the... Amen. You know, I had a, a preacher friend of mine teach me something. And every time in their church when, when the man of God ministers a word... And they're going to take that word. The preacher will say, let's have the protein in this word. Let's drink the protein in this word. And let's say, okay, Jude 20. You put your hand there. If that's the scripture that he mentioned. Build yourself up in the most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. Put your hand there. Put your hand, other hand here and say, Taking all the protein out of that boy. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. The See, the power of God will be manifested forth. If you build up your spirit, man. You know, just like Africa, we in India, nobody wants to sit together and hear a theological message. It is always a confrontation between powers. And we can boldly say, greater is the one who is in us than the one that is in the world. We demonstrate the power of God. We see miracles happening. We see signs, wonders, and miracles happening with the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, even tonight, hallelujah, even this afternoon, let the power of the Lord just overshadow you. Uh, may signs, wonders, and miracles follow you. Rabala swathana rebeni. Amjala brakasu amcheli rebento no rospal prakama swachat hurania. Amen. I heard, I heard, I think it's pastor who said on the first day that the Lord is not coming for a weak church. A beaten up church. He's coming for a powerful church. Look at somebody and say, you look like one of them who is in that church. Mm. Square up your shoulder, have an attitude, hallelujah. Say, <laughs> the power of the risen Lord is with me, hallelujah. Glory unto the name of Jesus. Oh, Amen. We are not belly button looking Christians, you know. How are you doing, sister? 
How are you doing? We're waiting for the coming of our Lord. Lift up your eyes for the King of Glory is going to appear one of these days. Hallelujah. Lift up your eyes. Lift up your voice. Jesus is coming soon. So second level, you go up. The problem with the second level is that people are temperamental. Birds, you can see them. One, at one time, they are in the sky. The next moment, they are in a tree. Then they're sitting on the ground. Never steady. Emotionally vulnerable. During the time of conference, you are like on fire for God. The next day morning, you are like, where the Holy Ghost go? I'm kind of depressed today. Pastor, please pray for me. But that's going to change. The moment you begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. I told you I was suicidal depression. I, would, I, I, I couldn't shave. I couldn't cut my hair. I would just lock myself in the room. Didn't want to eat, drink, not even have a bath. That's how depressed I would get. Wouldn't even brush my teeth for days. Don't worry, I brushed my teeth this morning. <laughs> Amen. It all changed. When I began to pray in the Holy Spirit, some of you who have, how many of you are baptized in the Holy Spirit? Can you lift your hands? Amen. Those of you who are not baptized in the Spirit, can you lift up your hands? You don't speak in tongues. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. God will fill you. God will fill you. Don't, God will fill you. Amen. I, I, I was so hungry for the Holy Spirit. I never received the Holy Spirit in a meeting like this. I tarried in that meeting waiting for the Holy Ghost to come. He didn't come. He went to somebody else. But I was so hungry, I was driving the car and going through the city of Cochin and it was in a traffic block and we we're sitting there. I was so hungry for Jesus. And I was sitting there and said, Lord, I want you to fill me, Lord, with your Holy Spirit. I want to speak in tongues. I want you to fill me, Lord. And I was saying, thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I was sitting in a traffic block saying, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And the Holy Ghost came upon me right at George Junction. We're going to build a church there now. That's a joke. <laughs> The Holy Ghost came upon me in a traffic block. So I tell people, you want to get the Holy Ghost, find yourself a traffic jam. <laughs> get to a place where you're so hungry for the Lord and say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And you keep on calling his name and saying, hallelujah. And the Holy Ghost will come upon you and give you utterance. And you will speak in tongues. Hallelujah. Glory be to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now recently we had one of our services and it was going light through the internet. And I said, you know, somebody watching us, you get the Holy Spirit is coming over you wherever you are. And that person was actually in Lebanon, a Muslim. He was watching that service and he started speaking in tongues. A month later, he came down to Cochin just to get baptized. The third level is where Noah and the family are, that's where the window is. That's where you have the power to have a vision. In the bottom level, you can see nothing else. The middle level, you can see nothing else. It is in the third level, you get to have some fresh air. Amen. Hallelujah. Just to get some fresh air. To see the freshness of the move of the Holy Spirit. In the third level, 
The difference is they are givers. They give. The power to give. You know, we have, a, I usually say it as a joke. How many of you know the American spade? American spade? You seen the American spade? You seen that? Yeah? And then we have something in India called Indian Mammati. <laughs> the difference is this. The spade is like and the Indian Mammati is like <laughs> don't be an Indian Mammati. <laughs> Be an American spade for the kingdom of God. Learn to give. Amen. Look at somebody and say, you look like a spade and not like an Indian mummity. Hallelujah. <laughs> to give. And I'm not just speaking about finances. Definitely give that. Amen. Definitely. You can never outgive God. You can never outgive God. You know, I was, when I got married, I told my wife, you know, we're gonna, I've saved up some money, we're gonna take a holiday, we're gonna have a honeymoon somewhere. So we saved up some money. And uh, about a week after the marriage, you know, a man of God came to the house and the Lord said to me, just give that amount to that man of God. So I, so I told my wife, you know how it is, you've got to pray in the Holy Ghost before you say something like this to your wife. <laughs> <laughs> so I told her, listen, this is what we're going to do. And she's a godly girl. She prayed and she said, fine. We'll do that. But you know what was amazing? That was the year that I got the invitation from Obama. And not only that, I had somebody sending us a ticket, a first class ticket, all the way from India to, for me and my wife. Once we reached there, we had a breakfast meeting with them. And then one of the senators invited us to his ranch. And we had senators and other nations leaders in that place. And they gave us the main room. See, we want to make that your honeymoon room. What I'm trying to tell you is you can never outgive God. So now when I tell my wife about giving, she is the most excited. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory unto the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let that kind of favor come upon you. May you walk into the third level. Hallelujah. Build up into the third level where you are givers for the kingdom of God. And just not about money. Sometimes it might be just a love. We are looking to receive all the time. Many a time a family problem is because the husband is looking to receive, the wife is looking to receive. When you learn to give, you're going to learn that now. Yeah, you're going to learn that now in family life. Whether it be love, whether it be mercy, whether it be forgiveness. Learn to give. We are looking to receive, but learn to give. We had a, you know, Gladys Staines, who lost the husband up in India. She, uh, her husband and two sons were burned alive in a part of India. Burned alive. Timothy and Philip, two sons, husband. Burned alive. And recently we went to the place where they were buried. And, you know, we were asking the Lord forgiveness for the sin that was committed in our land. But what is amazing about Gladys Staines is she forgave. She forgave 
her husband and children's killers. They didn't take it to the court. Okay. And you know what happened? The person who was in the forefront of that killing is a preacher today. This is kind of radical faith, right? Yeah. But to forgive, to just give. Show mercy, love. You know, once I had uh, somebody come to me and said, Pastor, you know, your church is such a blessing and all that. And I thought this dear aunt was really getting excited about the church. My, my messages might be really good. I'm kind of overwhelmed. You know, maybe I'm a good preacher and all that. I was just feeling kind of <clears throat> good about myself. It's like, I don't want to miss a single week. I'm so happy when I come here and go. I couldn't understand. After some time only when she told me, she said, you know, Pastor, I don't, I said, the, the word touched me. She said, no, no, it's not because of the word or you. Because every time I come, there is this old lady sitting in the back. She comes up and gives me a hug and says, welcome, 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 welcome. And that makes me feel so good. I wanted to taste the love of God like that. See, you are significant for the kingdom of God. Sometimes you don't have to hold a mic, but just holding the hand of somebody sitting next to you and saying, don't worry, hallelujah, the Lord will take care of you. He will build you up. He will fill you with his power. He will see you through. Can set that person free. If you believe that, lift your hand and give a shout unto Jesus. I close with this. The window is in the third level. There was a raven that was sent out from. It didn't come back. It likes dead things. There was a dow that was sent. It went. Came back. Was sent again. Went and came back with a green leaf. Was sent again a third time. Didn't come back. Speaks about the move of the Holy Spirit. Genesis 1 in the beginning. The earth was formless and dark and void. But the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. In the Old Testament, a few people, a Samson or a Gideon or a David, the anointing would come upon them, gave them great victories, the green olive trees, the branches there in their hands. But the Spirit of God would leave, go back. You know why? Because you can't bear up with the habit of Samson. You can't put up with the habit of Samson. He was a he-man with a she-weakness. <clears throat> <laughs> so the spirit of God would go back he would have his victories moments in the church where he would get up and jump and dance but then but then the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost and he's not gone back you know why because he sees the infirmities, our weakness. And he bears up with us. And he's working in us. To perfect us. And to prepare us. And he will only go with you and me. When Jesus Christ comes in great glory. When Jesus comes in great glory. He's only going. Look at somebody and say the Holy Spirit will only leave this planet earth with you. Hallelujah. He's going to lift you up. Amen. You know, I, I grew up in a church where I was taught that you got to be really, really, really holy for the Holy Spirit to come upon you, you know. You know, I had the Holy Spirit come upon me. I've seen the Holy Spirit come upon many people who are still unholy. It is like telling a, it is like telling, it is like telling a, a man who is able to walk properly, here I'll give you a stick, a walking stick. A guy who is walking properly, why does he need a walking stick? But a guy who is, the Holy Spirit sympathizes with our weakness. 
He helps us in our weakness. Amen. He sees you are not walking straight. And he says, I'm not going to leave you. I'm going to hold you. I'm going to perfect you. I'm going to strengthen you. I'm going to build you up. And I'm going to raise you up for the glory of Jesus Christ. And use you to the ends of the earth. Lift your hands and say, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Let us stand up in our places. Give a shout to Jesus. Let us pray for the Holy Spirit of God. Open your mouth, open your mouth, ask the Holy Spirit. You are able to sympathize and help us with our weakness. Even this afternoon, Father, in the name of Jesus, may your Holy Spirit wind come upon them. A fresh move of the Holy Spirit, a fresh wind. Let the heavenly Tao, the Holy Ghost, descend over everyone who is hungry in this place. Open your mouth and say, Holy Spirit, fill me. Jesus, fill me. Open your mouth. Nobody stand with your mouth closed. Open your mouth, speak to Jesus, speak to Jesus. Speak to Jesus. Speak to Jesus. Say, power of the Holy Ghost, come upon me. Power of the Holy Ghost, come upon me. Power of the Holy Ghost, come upon me. Raja la bara ba shahatura da la. Raise bachadu la bana ba sha. Jiba la bara ba hamdu swalam se de be swachadara. Raidi limanam shahidura swachadana. Open your mouth and say, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, fill me afresh with your Holy Spirit. I receive the gift of God in my life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, your word declares to us that you will build your church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Build your church, O God. Let not the gates of hell ever prevail against us. We give you all glory and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you so much, man of God. Thank you so much. Thank you.